I always stress to my client, it is up to the momentum mm -hmm. that they want to create for themselves. And I support them with what is your budget so that you can really come Because you don't want to stress them. No, I want yeah, them to come feeling liberated yeah. that they have this amount of energy, money, for this amount of time. And so we create a, a package that works for them. And some clients come to me, you know, a couple times and they're really off on their way. Well, other people really want yeah. to work yeah. for a period of time. That could be six months. It's, I've worked with couple, some people yeah. a couple, three years just because they like Mm -hmm. The energy they like, the mobility that their their life seems to take when they have accountability. Do they have to be there in person, or can you coach them over the phone? Either way, I, I uh -huh. do a lot of phone coaching. Right. But now, I, I, do they have to set goals, or do they have to do homework? Well, you know, that's part of it. They don't have to, but I say, you know, I call it field work. If I were going to give you field work, this mm -hmm. is what I would encourage you to do. Mm -hmm. And and it always comes kind of intuitively what it might be. But for example, one one of my clients complained that she says, you know, I just I feel like a failure, um, and that came from most people. Their, a lot their, of people do they, right, in some yeah. area of their lives, right? Yeah. And so I just said, you know, you've got to stop when that old story. You feel that heaviness. Mm -hmm. You need to make a declaration, and that declaration would be your homework. And I would say, then, I would like you to write one sentence about who are you becoming. Okay, and I said, well, I want to be a confident, empowered woman. You know, I'll say, well, then you would say, I am I, a right. yeah. confident, empowered woman. See it in the now. Yes, exactly. And so I would help them fashion mm -hmm. their yes. declaration, and then that would be their homework, is that they would wake up and they would carry it with them, and they would repeat that over and over again so that there was a new habit that would replace the habitual negative one. And we do negative talk all the time. All the time. I call it private I conversation. Myself. I try to stop myself. Yeah. Exactly. I call it a mind virus. There you a go. A mind virus. Mm -hmm. That's, <laughs> yeah. Because the mind virus starts also as a child, and it's a matrix. Mm -hmm. And the more negative we've experienced as, as a child, we, we dis, uh, disassociate. And we keep disassociating. And I meet people in my practice that are so unaware that they're disassociated because they're yes. not present. Yes. You can look into someone's eyes and they Is that what it means, Badish, disassociation, not being present in your body? Yes. Uh -huh. And when I see a percentage of disassociation, I will refer them to a psychologist mm -hmm. uh, because I really believe there's a level between really uh, a fear-charged life, passive-aggressive, maybe even schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. So. I wouldn't refer them to to a coach. No. Uh, I won't take them, them on. <laughs> no. Because my job is to be authentic to myself, and if I get this feeling, mm -hmm. then I'm going to refer them to somebody who can really assist them. Because yes. there is something that is, is vibrating there totally. that could be something that we wouldn't want to be feeling? responsible for. Do you get that I do, for. and I wanted to just say yeah. that that's one of the things I, I make clear with the clients when they come to me, that this is not to replace no. psychotherapy no. or um, drug treatment or any other kind of, you So know. it's logical. You may get a person with, with oh, and they, deeper issues. Oh, they do issues. show up, yeah. but I, I mean, just honest with them, you know, yeah. I really don't feel coaching is for you right at this point, yeah. Yeah. you know. It's and next step, maybe. That's yeah. right, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I think many times coaching is great for people who feel like they've completed mm -hmm. therapy to a large degree and they're ready just to to really engage with life a little mm -hmm. bit more and so that's a good we talked about something before we did the show which I think <laughs> would be interesting for women a lot of times women will marry a man or have a boyfriend and they want it they figure well I like this this but I don't like this but when we get married I can change them no you can <laughs> never change anybody but you can yes by changing, changing yourself. yourself yeah that's right tell us how that works well it's again going back to knowing what part of your life you want to embrace that is not quite bubbling up, mm -hmm. that you feel like you want to expand into. Um, I'm trying to... Uh, well, if, it, if it stumps you, it no, just it's means... Fine. Yeah. I, I think it's important, Because though. sometimes you throw something at you, and I'm thinking, you know, I know that when you change <laughs> and you react to somebody, they're going to react differently. Like, oh, so, that's, that's a good... That reminds me. I, okay, I there you go. Story. <laughs> I knew it'd come. <laughs> Um, Cheryl was a lovely young woman who worked with me and her expertise and she was so proud of her accomplishment mm -hmm. she worked for a um, mechanic 
in a um, car dealership, and mm -hmm. she had graduated top at her class, and she was proud of herself that she knew this, but by goodness, when she started working with this group of men, she was totally disregarded, um, spoke to... Disrespected. Totally mm -hmm. disrespected. Ignored. It was horrible, and, and, and she was trying to cope with her feelings because she wanted approval, and she wanted acceptance because she was very good at what she did, but they would they would sabotage her with you know broken tools and break her stuff and did all kinds of passive aggressive. She was a mechanic. Yes, yes, she was a man mechanic. Oh, I I uh, missed it. I thought maybe she was just in the office, but she was no, in the van. No, she was in the car. Oh, gee, yeah, that's and rude. I was really <laughs> impressed with her uh, capacity, and she was taking this on, and um, but she came to me just really really in pain over it, and so I told her that. She had to stop needing acceptance and approval mm -hmm. by these other people. And that she needed to protect herself. Talk about energy transference. That she needed to protect herself and to have some tools to use. And one of the tools I gave her was to what I call shields up. <laughs> and I says, imagine, <laughs> imagine you're, you're in front of this man who's, this person who's giving you all this negativity. Imagine a mirror between of you and, and, and just know that only love can come into you good things and only love and good things good thoughts and good words can come out and so that anything that's unlike love and kindness and compassion just goes back to source right just goes back and relax and don't let the arrow hook you're talking about holding on to her power you bet mm -hmm. yeah you bet yeah. and that that the other part was to consistently observe herself and notice any charge that she had of resentment and to release it. And what was wonderful, she came back the next time beaming, <laughs> so excited. She says, they're not treating me the same. She learned, she did it quickly. She did. Well, she diffused the energetic exchange. She did. That was going on. I don't think people understand that when they're triggered, there's because there's a fine thread mm -hmm. energetically that goes on in a mirroring. Oh, it's huge. And so if you pull the plug mm -hmm. on the mirroring, you pull the plug on the energies, mm -hmm. then it no longer is participating and you're feeling very non-threatened, mm -hmm. you're feeling very secure, Totally. you're in your power, mm -hmm. and therefore it's not being engaged. So that was a wonderful tool to share with our audience. And I also mm -hmm. want to share that she took yeah, this please. another level, which was really, yeah. when we talked about the physical body, <clears throat> she actually ended up uh, wounding herself and, and cutting uh, the tendons in her finger on the job and she had to go and get uh, surgery on her hand. Was this before? She Af this is after she oh. practiced it with her, her uh, work, workman um, but what she ended up doing is having to have surgery uh -huh. and she was allergic to all kinds of pain meds and so she decided to use the same practice with the pain, the energy of the pain mm -hmm. so she would feel the pain and then she would just let it go, just drain right. And she says, you know, I could go through that whole process without any pain meds. Wow. So it's powerful yes. what we do with energy. It's very Where powerful. It. it sounds like mm -hmm. life coaching embraces a lot of the metaphysical concepts. It is. It's, it's transformational, you mm -hmm. know. Yes. It really is a transformational approach to um, ex accessing more of your capacity. Mm -hmm. We really are powerful beings, and mm -hmm. we just we're using a small part of that. Totally. It sounds like coaching is bringing out a lot of that with what you do. You know, and it's different for everyone and some people I never get into that because it's not necessary. So really? it's very individual for each person. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I really believe that one of the things that's happening today is that people are so afraid of change. Oh. They get in their comfort zones and that's where they are the most comfortable and then anything that's going to rock their world and take them out mm -hmm. of that comfort zone even if it isn't good for them they'll go into what they think is a comfort zone and you as a as a teacher or uh, a coach you're trying to get them out if you're if you're seeing that the comfort zone is not healthy and then you try to give them some tools of change the resistance is absolutely amazing because it's primal. Mm 